can print these drawings out and then you can just make adjustments on the drawing and then eventually go back to the computer and add these in and make adjustments over time if you don't want to have your laptop out in the shop. So I've got that first drawing open. We won't do this for each drawing. We'll just do it for the major skills that are involved. So right now, how do we drill a hole, especially if we don't have a drill press, that's fairly straight, is three inches from the top, we need a bolt hole for the swing arms. So we're gonna go ahead and put that, mark it, and then we'll use the drill guide to get that nice and straight. Let's kind of center that up so that we don't get off on our drill and have the hole where it's not centered up. And then even if you don't have a drill press, you can still use that smaller bit to center the hole and get it lined up and then use the larger hole to drill it out. And there, that'll reduce the chance that you get off drilling this by hand. All right, so we got that one marked. We're going to do the next one this is the back frame tube. And this is going to be the longest tube in the bunch. So I think I ordered this at 48 inches bunch. You notice this is 32 inches here. So what we're going to do is take the longest tube, think it's 48 inches, and we're going to put our first bend in at 102 degrees, 0.7, and then we'll go to 168 degrees. Bend at the bottom, but we're going to do this one first. And then whatever's left, whatever excess is left, then we'll cut it off. Before we put that in the bender, I just want to make sure that is 48 inches. Yeah, 48 inches for this. So now we're going to put this in our tube bender. Part of that tube, we're just going to insert it here. I just need to make sure I've got enough room to bend it. All right, that looks good. So we've already got the three quarter inch die that's in there. But if you were trying to estimate it, I've provided a formula for you. And I may make a separate video on just how to use that, but not for this video. Let's get our bend started. And then we'll check our angle here in a sec. So we'll check it against this line here. And you want that to be tight to make sure you don't get any warping on that. That's close. We also got a factory in spring back. It'll spring back so I definitely don't want to go too far. All right, that's good. Right around there. I'm going to mark that so that we can use this one as a gauge for the next one. Even. It was really 32.7. It's almost 33, but we don't need to go much bit and we may have to adjust make sure that's staying down so what we don't want to happen is that that turns as it bends so what I'm doing is just kind of turning that keeping it where it was at all right good we got that right in the bend the edge of this looking down on it is right in the center of the bar that's all we're doing yeah good that actually looks pretty good. Looks really close. Like I said, we may have to bend that in a little bit more or bend this one down. We'll do our adjustments once we get everything kind of measured and cut, but we're gonna leave this one just as it is. A bit more, not much. Cause we're gonna get a little spring back anyway. That's probably good. All right, before we do the next bend, let's take this one out and compare it and then we'll make our mark there. So let's look at this. Okay, so we have to put it back in. So 
let's just look at these for just a sec. So this one, the top one, I think is bent a little less. What I'm gonna do so is mark in the same location we had that last one. And that looks like where it's gonna begin. Idea of how much we need to move. don't need to go far. So again, I'm just making sure this is not turning up as we're bending it and that it's staying level. Let's check that. Ooh, that's really close too. Let's see how well that bend matches up. We could do a little bit more, not much. I think that is as close as we're going to get. They are not a perfect match, but they are super close. And once we start doing the full assembly, then we can uh, go in and make adjustments. Part six and part seven, we'll take a 12 inch tube, put a 90 degree bend in it, and then we'll cut it from there on what we need to make the connection work. So we don't want to cut it until after we've got the bend in there. I think we can go a little bit more. That's good. We'll probably get some spring back. Good. Ninety degrees a little bit easier to eyeball. And we can trim off any excess, but that's going to be really close. We're going to go ahead and bend the swing arm, same die. Let me go look at the angle we're going to need. Mark that at a half inch. We're going to do that first bend at 104 degrees. Let's get that on there. We'll get it tightened down. Go on around. And I can adjust the measurements in the drawings later on, because I think that'll be closer to what I've done in the past. There, what I can look down through the porthole. Let's go to 104 on this bend. That should be pretty close. I actually want this to come up fairly. So let's, uh, let's go a little bit more than that. Yeah. So we're about at 80 there as well. So we need enough space so that it'll fit right up underneath our arm. So we're gonna stop there. So we've done 80 and 80. We're gonna change that other bend in the drawing to 80. And we'll put that in the updated video. That looks good. We're gonna bend that. So then it'll, we're going to go all the way until we want to get close to a 90 degree if we can. So it'll have something to connect back into the harness, into the frame. Ooh, bent that too. There we go. So I'll, let's see if that's going to work. Actually, that should be pretty good. So this is what we're looking for. That part is going to go into the frame. This is gonna clip down to our harness. We actually probably could have turned that down a little bit more, but it'll work. We're gonna flatten this out so that we can have something that clips in here. We'll have another connection point up here. But yeah, that is what we're shooting for. So we wanted that one as close to 90 as we could get. So we're gonna repeat that process of bends for the next one, then we'll compare the two. If there are any other bends in tubing that you need, just follow the same process, put it in your bender, look at the angle, bend it to that angle. Setup would be the same if you have the bender that I have. 
now that we've done these, the only thing that I haven't shown is how to cut tubing. And we need to go over the tube roller. So that's gonna be our next step in the process. This is a tube roller. These are my homemade guides. They're actually set for different size hoop segments. Have one at a 38, that was for the DLE, one for an electric paramotor that I created. This one's set at 53, that's pretty close to what we need, so we'll go just underneath that. Now, if you don't know exactly how far they should be bent, you can make a guide on the ground. I'll take a pasteboard or paper on the ground, cardboard on the ground, you tape it down, you mount something to the center, and then you make a diameter, the length of the hoop that you're creating. So we're looking for a 56 inch hoop. I do have a 53 marked on here. So we're gonna go just underneath that and then we'll stop. And then we'll compare it to another paramotor I have. If you have a paramotor and you're just replicating that hoop, you can compare these segments to that and then eventually you can mark that. So there's gonna be about three or four inches here at each end that don't roll out. And then we're gonna roll this down just a little bit, each segment, you don't wanna to do too much at a time because it'll surprise you how much it rolls things out. But you do need these guides. There are companies that make guides for this one. But I found these are just as useful. Gets it good enough for what I need. All right, so I'm gonna roll again. I'll do about a half turn. You notice it's starting to bend. It gives it a nice bend. You don't wanna to do too much at one time because it can kink your tube. So I'll roll it out nice and even. Go back to the center here and give it another half turn. So it'd be great if I had another center piece here or if these were solid. I kind of like being able to see through it. Like see, I added a center piece to this one, but I don't have it over here. Three. So we should be pretty close to 56. We're going to go compare this to our other paramotor. Now the other paramotor we're using for comparison does not have a 56 inch hoop. It's actually got a 58. So it's going to be bigger. But as long as we're close to that, and if we exactly match it, then we know we just need just a little bit more bend to get ourselves there. So we'll stop shy of it, but same process will apply for you. And if you don't have a paramotor to compare to, draw the diameter you need out on paper on the ground and compare it to a 90 degree segment of that drawing. All right, let's go ahead. I gotta remember which way to go so I don't bend it right in the middle. Let's loosen that up. Let's go compare that to our other paramotor. So this is what I was talking about on this one. It'll do a really good job of bending until you get to the last little bit, like the last three or four inches. Doesn't do a great job on. But luckily for us, we don't need that 36 inches here. We just need a portion of that to our paramotor. And see, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, would be perfect for a 58 inch hoop, which is what this one is. And it's got a 130 centimeter prop on it. We're gonna have a 125 centimeter on ours. So therefore we don't need this large. In fact, this will accommodate a 140 prop here. This cage would still provide enough protection. So good. So you would draw something like this out, 56 inches diameter, and then compare against your drawing. So 
So this is the back frame tube. We don't need all of it, so we're going to cut a portion off. I need inches here off. just to go over methods of cutting. So we've got everything in the video on how to prep these tubes. So we got that chopped off now. Same process for any other tubes that you need to trim. For this one, we're gonna slide it in the bottom part of that base tube and that back connection. And then we'll hook it in the front and then whatever's overhanging at the base, we'll mark that and we'll come back and cut that off. But we gotta start the assembly process to know how much we need to trim off here and if we need to bend these a little bit more.